so good day everyone so in this session we will discuss about uh, root locus and its importance in control system so uh, we'll go with one example and we'll try to plot the root locus according to the transfer function which is given in the question before that we need to understand what is meant by root locus root locus in control system is defined as the way of plotting the roots of the characteristic equations for different values of parameters so that is the the significance of root locus in control system so generally in uh, when we draw any root locus the forward path transfer function is given and uh, also the feedback path transfer function is given and generally in most of the cases the forward path transfer with unity feedback is given in uh, your Now, g of s has given some transfer function, and your uh, your uh, your feedback path is can generally is considered to be unity. So your h s is considered to be one. So in that cases, the root locus is uh, uh, is plotted when we vary the constants. Uh, that here in this cases the k varies from zero to infinity. So let's consider one example here. So the example is here. The forward path transfer function for of a unity feedback is given by g of s is equal to k divided by s whole into s plus four into s plus five. So sketch the root locus as k varies from zero to infinity. So that means for k when it varies from zero to infinity, we have to draw the root locus for unity feedback system. With g of s, that is a forward path transfer function, with k divided by s into s plus four s plus five. So in that case, is how to draw this thing. So first step one is first we need to uh, check where are our poles and zeros. So we need to know that the poles means it's that values of s for that your transfer function becomes infinity. That means if you put the values of that. Dot values of s, then the transfer becomes infinity. In this case, s, if you can see, when we put s is equal to zero, s is equal to minus four, and s is equal to minus five. So, if you put this value of s here, then this transfer function becomes infinity. That means when you put s is equal to zero, also it becomes infinity. When you put s is equal to minus four, it becomes infinity. When s is equal to minus five. The transfer function becomes infinity. So here the poles are situated at s is equal to zero, minus four, and minus five. So zero means at or the origin, minus four means it is at negative real axis at the coordinate minus four zero, and minus five means it is at the negative real axis at minus five zero. Okay. So these are the poles. Now let's consider about zeros. How many zeros are there, and where are they? If you can see in the denominator, we have only the constant k, right? And there is no zero because zeros are those values of s for which the transfer transfer function becomes zero. So in this case, if we see that uh, the there is no zero, s is there is no s, there is no s term, so there is no associated zero with this transfer function. So your number of zeros are zeros. So here we can conclude that your poles are Located at s is equal to zero, minus four, minus five. Okay, if you take into consideration coordinates, so it is at origin zero zero, minus four zero at negative real axis, minus five zero at negative real axis. Now, then the number of poles become three because zero minus four minus five, so total three number of poles. Then how many zeros? As I said, there is no zero associated with this transfer function, so the number of zeros z is equal to zero. Okay, so p denotes the number of poles and z determines the number of zeros. Now, in these cases, the root locus exists between zero to minus four and to the left of minus five. Okay, so that we have to mark it the root locus on the real axis. Okay, so first we have to denote this point zero, minus four, and minus five. Okay. Then step three, we have to find out How how many number of root loci are there? Okay, how many number of root loci are there? So how we can know? 
if you can see here the number of poles is equal to 3 and number of zero z is equal to 0 so according to the rule of constructing root loci uh, if the number of poles is greater than the number of zeros then the number of root loci will be equal to the number of poles okay but let's consider there is an example where the number of zeros is greater than number of poles then in that case the number of root loci will be equal to the number of zero right sometimes it may so happen that the number of zeros is equal to number of poles then in that case the number of root loci is equal to number of poles is equal to number of zeros for this example, we have number of poles is greater than the number of zero. So definitely as per the rule, the number of root loci, which is denoted by capital N, that is equal to three. Okay. So one thing is we conclude here that number of poles is equal to three, number of zeros is equal to zero, number of root loci is equal to three. Then step four, we have to determine the centroid of asymptotes. Okay. Central asymptotes, asymptotes is uh, here denoted by sigma a. Okay, so how to determine? It is defined by sum of poles minus sum of zeros divided by number of poles minus number of zeros. Okay, so what is this? If you find out the sum of poles, then it is zero minus four minus five minus sum of zeros. So there is no zero. So zero minus number of poles number of poles is three minus number of zero is zero okay so here what we have to do in sum of poles we have to add all the poles here minus add all the zero divided by number of poles minus number of zero so if you can find the center of asymptotes is found to be minus three so that means your center of asymptotes is located at minus three zero point at negative real axis okay after this, we have to find out the angle of asymptotes. Remember, the angle of asymptotes is that point where uh, we have to draw the asymptote for different values of k. And where at what point the angle of asymptotes to be drawn? It is at the centroid of asymptotes. So that means at the centroid of asymptotes, we have to draw the angle of asymptotes. How to determine the angle of asymptotes? It is defined by let's phi is the angle of asymptotes. It is defined by 2k plus 1 divided by p minus z into 180 degree. Okay, what is p? p is the number of poles, z is the number of zeros. Okay. Now number of poles minus number of zero is 3. Right. Now we have to vary the k value from 0, 1, and 2. Now if you put k is equal to 0, then what will be your angle? 60 degree. If you put k is equal to 1, the angle will be 180 degree. If we put k is equal to 2, then the angle will be 300 degree. So this is so these are the angles we have to draw at the center of asymptotes, and that make our angle of asymptotes. So there are three angles you have to draw: that 60 degree, 180 degree, and 300 degree. Right. Then step six, we have to draw the breakaway points. What is the breakaway points? So that is breakaway points is generally situated at the real axis of your uh, root of your root locus. So for that we have to find out what is the characteristic equation. As you know, the characteristic equation is defined by one plus G S H S is equal to zero. Okay, which is where G S is your forward part transfer function and H S is your unit is your feedback by transfer function gs is already given in this question that is this is your gs k by s all into s plus 4 and s plus 5 and at it is a unity feedback system so definitely your h of s is equal to 1 so when we put g of s and h, s, h of s value is equal in this characteristics equation then we'll get 1 plus k divided by s all into s plus 4 into s plus 5 equal to 0 right then if you can find out, if you can find out, then this equal to zero means definitely your numerator has to be zero. So if you can take the numerator value, so that means it will be SSQ plus 9S square plus 20S plus K is equal to zero. 
So that equal to k is equal to minus s is q minus 9 s square minus 20 s. So in order to determine the breakaway point, we have to differentiate the k with respect to s. So dk by ds we have to find out. If we can find out the differentiation, it is coming to be minus 3 s square minus 18 s minus 20 is equal to 0. So that equal to 3 s square plus 18 s plus 20 is equal to 0. So we'll get two points. One is minus 1.4725 and another is minus 4.5275. Okay. But as I, I said, your root locus exists between 0 to minus 4 and to the left of minus 5. So the, the valid breakout point is considered to be minus 1.4725 because minus 4 to minus 4 to minus 5 is not the segment of root locus therefore we consider minus 1.4725 as a breakaway point then we have to determine the point of intersection of branches of root locus with imaginary axis so for this we have to again consider the characteristic equation so that is s is q plus 9 s square plus 20 s plus k is equal to 0 so here we have to make the root or which table. So s is q, s is square, s to the power 1 and s to the power 0. So here we have to take the coefficient of s is q 1. Then we have to take the coefficient of s 20. Then you have to take the coefficient of s is square 9. And we have to take the coefficient of s to the power 0 that is k. Okay. Then what will be your s to the power 1? So as you know, 1 into k minus 20 into 9 divided by minus 1 by 9. So if you find this value, it will be 120 minus k divided by 9. Okay. And this is 0. And how to find out this value? 9 into 0 minus 180 minus k divided by 9 multiplied by k. That is divided by minus 120 180 minus k divided by 9. Okay. So if you find this value, it will be considered to be k. Okay. Now, if you put uh, k is equal to 180, if you put k is equal to 180, so this this row becomes 0, right? If this row becomes 0, so we have to take the auxiliary equation. So the rule for taking the auxiliary equation is that the row where it becomes 0, we have to take the above row as a characteristic equation. So in this cases, our characteristics, immediate characteristics equation will be 9 s square plus k that is the characteristic equation because this row becomes 0 so we have to take the above row so 9 s square plus k is equal to 0 so nine, that means if you put k is equal to 180 so it will be s is equal to plus or minus j 4.47 okay so that means 0 4.47 on the positive imaginary axis and minus j 0.4.47 negative imaginary axis that is your point of intersection of branches of root locus with the imaginary axis. So we have to locate this point 0 4.47 and minus 0 0.4.47 at the on the imaginary axis. Okay. So how to draw the root locus? So this is your root locus. You see, if you can see the root locus is plotted on the normal graph paper. So this is your real axis, x axis and y is your imaginary axis. Minus 3 is your uh, centroid of asymptotes. So, as I said, we have to draw the angle of asymptotes. So, this is 60 degree, another is 180 degree, and another is 300 degree. 300 degree is nothing but minus 60 degree. So, that is where it is drawn in this direction. Then we have this breakaway point that is minus 1.4725, and through this, it joins the point of intersection with the imaginary axis so that means remember the root locus will crosses through the breakaway point and intersects with the imaginary axis at these two points so 0 0.147 and minus 0 0.4.47 okay and um, so this way we have to determine the uh, the root locus so you have to determine where is your poles if you can see the poles are located 0 minus 4 minus 5 and uh, this is your centroid of asymptotes. This is your breakaway point. This is the point of intersection with the imaginary axis, and we'll consider the root locus. So in this way, we can draw the root locus for a given transfer function, and that we can show it on the graph paper.
Thank you, everyone.